I have learned at least two things from living in the Midwest for more than a decade. First, if you live in or around Chicago, Willis Tower, renamed such in 2009, is and will always be Sears Tower. Last week, when the building's electricity went out from flooding, even the magazine Popular Mechanics ran a headline that read, how much water does it take to knock out the Sears Tower? The same goes for local radio station 95.9 The River, which reposted on its website several user-generated photos declaring, last night's power outage at Sears Tower looks eerie from every angle. So number one, it's Sears Tower, not Willis Tower. Second, if you live within a 100 mile radius of Chicago, do not refer to this building on State Street with its huge exterior clocks, popular window displays, and Tiffany mosaic ceiling as Macy's. In this city, it is and will always be Marshall Field and Company, or simply Marshall Fields. Many movies and television shows have been shot inside and outside Marshall Fields. For example, My Best Friend's Wedding, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Mahogany, What Women Want, Baby's Day Out, Office Christmas Party, and some episodes of the TV series ER. Before the COVID-19 pandemic began, I was working with Marshall Fields' tourism department to create a movie-themed walking tour at this flagship store here on State Street. Hopefully those talks will resume soon and our tour will one day come to fruition. In the meantime, while we're at the store, let's talk a little about Marshall Fields' history with cinema, which even most Chicagoans do not realize spans more than 125 years. Chicago movie tours. As we stand in front of Marshall Fields, which was acquired by Macy's in 2005, let's consider just a sliver of the store's relationship to film history. After all, I don't want to give away too much information that you could learn on an upcoming visit with Chicago movie tours. So let's go with the year 1923. By 1923, moving pictures had been prominent in the United States for almost 20 years. And since their earliest incarnation, which we discussed in last week's walking tour, Marshall Fields paid attention. In fact, I have records from 1897 that tie Marshall Fields to film, but we'll save that for our potential in-person walking tour. So, back to 1923. In February of that year, Marshall Fields placed this ad in the Chicago Tribune with the headline, Movies in Our Book Section. You see, in addition to clothing, home goods, toys, and lots of other merchandise, Marshall Fields sold books. On this store's third floor, customers could find books for everyone, as this Christmas ad from 1914 explains. Another ad, this one from 1916, tells us the store's latest fiction was conveniently located near the public restrooms. With that information, we can assume Marshall Fields' book section was probably a well-trafficked area. In the winter of 1923, Marshall Fields turned a large section of its book department into a makeshift movie theater. This store called the exhibit Photoplay Book Display, Photoplay being an early term for the movies. So what do we know about this exhibit? Well, at least four details. Its size, its inspiration, its content, and its cost. First, we know its size. According to Industry Magazines, the displays at Marshall Fields measured about 30 feet by 60 feet, which is almost the size of a full tennis court. Second, we know its inspiration. The front of the exhibit was an exact replica of the Chicago Theater, including the marquee which makes sense when you learn that the movies the display was promoting were playing just down the street at the Chicago Theater. Third, we know its content. For its customers, Marshall Fields' movie display projected the trailers for two movies and two short comedies. Also, at designated times between 11 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., a lecturer spoke about how photo plays are made from books. Fourth, we know how much it cost. 
Marshall Fields and the book's publishers reportedly spent $1,500 on the photo play book display, which equates to about $23,000 today. And that does not include the money they spent on advertising in newspapers and on the tops of menus of over 150 Chicago restaurants. Let's dig a little deeper into the content of this 1923 book store exhibit. Among the movies featured in Marshall Fields' photo play book display were The Christian and The Stranger's Banquet, both adaptations of books by the same name. The Christian was written by Hall Caine in 1897 and is considered the first British novel to reach one million copies sold. In fact, it was so popular with audiences that by 1923, when Marshall Field set up that makeshift movie theater here, this book had already been transferred to the screen three times in 1911, 1915, and 1916. The second trailer shown on Marshall Field's third floor bookstore was The Stranger's Banquet. The book on which the movie is based was written by Don Byrne in 1919 and was reprinted in 1922 with scenes from the photo play. Books and movies still share this symbiotic relationship, of course. Take John Green's best-selling novel, The Fault in Our Stars, for example. Its cover originally looked like this, but after the film adaptation was released, it was reprinted with this cover and, as Amazon says, a full-color insert of stills from the movie. Before we go, let's recap. What do we know, and why is what we know significant? Well, we know Marshall Fields' history with cinema spans more than 125 years. We know that in the winter of 1923, Marshall Fields turned a portion of its book department into a makeshift movie theater and display. We also know the display size, inspiration, and cost. Finally, we know a bit about the content with which audiences at the store would have engaged. So why is all of this significant? I can offer a couple of reasons. First, it teaches us about early film marketing. Publishers working with exhibitors, working with booksellers, each with the intent of increasing sales. As the publisher who worked with Marshall Fields on the photo play book display put it, the more books that are sold, the more people will go to the picture houses to compare the picture with the book. Second, knowing this history also teaches us about the mindset of those behind Marshall Fields. Marshall Fields was a top-tier department store and at one point the largest in the world. It also set the trends for fashion in Chicago and arguably the entire Midwest. Therefore, staying on top of the latest fads, pop culture movements, and technology, including moving pictures, was certainly important to sales and reputation. Hopefully soon, you will be able to learn much more about Marshall Field's interest in film on an upcoming tour with me and Chicago Movie Tours. Until then, this will have to do. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours, and I'll see you next time with another movie and Chicago-themed virtual walking tour.